Okay, so suppose we want to look at a system that's sort of similar to the positronian system, but uh, not exactly the same thing. It occurred to me that if you think about a binary star system, those guys, uh, it's two masses orbiting the common center of mass. Um, it's a lot like positronium, except instead of charges the and, and electrostatic force, the, invol the force involved is, uh, is gravity. So imagine I've got two stars, say, let's say they're both, you know, mass m, something like that, and they're separated by a distance r, <coughs> okay, and, uh, and they're orbiting one another, so they're moving in circular orbits. Look, it's just like positronium. The only difference is the force of interaction is not the Coulomb force, but it's the universal gravitational force. So I'm going to assume they're equal masses and uh, just put in U Newton's universal law of gravitation. This is just the magnitude of the force, of course. I'm not calculating it as a vector. Because really what I want to do is relate that to the rate of change in momentum. So, um, so what we're going to end up with, this has to be dp dt. We learned in Physics 153 that dp dt is the same thing uh, as mv squared over r as long as the speed is not close to the speed of light. So what we end up with is gm squared over r squared is the rate of change the momentum. That's going to be mv squared over r. But hang on, the r in this case is the radius of the circle. That's actually r over 2. As I called, I've already labeled r as the distance between the stars. So the r that goes in the in the rate of change of momentum is the radius of the circle. That's half of the of the distance between the, the two stars. In this case, since they're equal mass, the center of mass is exactly in the middle. Okay. Now the other thing we want to do is to relate the frequency, the angular velocity. Excuse me. Um, it's the same thing as the angular frequency of the orbit uh, to the speed. So these guys are moving. This guy has a speed v pointing this way. This guy has a velocity, it's a velocity pointing that way, but the magnitude of velocity is the speed. So that's going to be the angular velocity, omega, times the radius of the orbit, which is, of course, r over 2. So, but wait a minute, here I've got mv squared over r over 2, but v is omega r over 2. So if you write v squared divided by r over 2, that's omega squared, r squared over 4, divided by r over 2. You can see one of these r's is going to cancel. This 2 is going to cancel one of the 2's in there, and that's going to leave you with omega squared times r over 2. So that's v squared over r. I can take that, stick that guy in there, and I get g m squared over r squared. And over here, I'm going to have m omega squared r over 2. And this m, of course, is the same m as that. So one of these m's cancels, yeah? And uh, this r, I can bring downstairs and make that an r cubed, OK? And, and this 2, I can bring over here. So now you can see omega squared is looking like this. Now, th that's a little bit. <coughs> like what we see in the in the case of the Coulomb law. So it's 2 g big M over r cubed. There you go. All right, I hope that helps. Um, for the you can you can see this is similar to the positronium case, but it's just uh, ap applied to gravity. So all you have to do is modify this a little bit and uh, use the gravity situation. So I hope that helps.